This week I'm preaching on it's to your advantage. And I want you to turn with me to John chapter 16 and verse 7 and stand in honor of the reading of God's Word. And uh, uh, <clears throat> I want to thank the praise team. So glad to have Juliana back. I guess she's going back in the back. Give them a nice hand, Travis and Jesse and, and Ted and Megan and uh, Juliana. What a wonderful job they do. Thank you, Mom, for playing for me today. My voice actually, as I told you, Jesse, last time my voice went bad, I said, when I come back, I'll be better than ever. It sounded almost normal today, bless God. And I, I thank God for that because it's been quite a number of years since I've been able to actually sing a song and feel confident that it was going to come out like I wanted it to come out. And then again, you know, I had my mother playing for me, so maybe that was the secret antidote right there. <laughs> Amen? So in John 6, 16, chapter 7, the Bible reads like this, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. In the American Living American Standard Bible in John 16, 7 reads like this, but I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go away, I will send him to you. Okay? Let's pray. Father, I thank you today for the Word of God. Open our eyes that we can see and our ears that we can hear what the Word of God says to us in this hour. <laughs> Father, I thank you today that the Holy Spirit has been sent to be our advantage and has been sent to be our helper. I pray today, God, that we will understand that the Holy Spirit has been sent to be our partner. Our partner. Now minister to us today, God, as the Word goes forth. Open our eyes that we can see, ears that we can hear, heart that we can understand what the Holy Ghost is saying to it and then let us apply it to our life and we'll give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Jesus spoke these words in John 16, 7 with a purpose. Three times in the Word of God, Jesus used the term expedient. Twice it was used by Jesus and once by Caiaphas. Jesus said in John eleven fifty, it's expedient for you that one die so that the nation not perish. It's to your advantage. Now I want you to get this because I've said this to you before and I'm not, I, 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 I want to make sure that it resonates with you. Jesus said in John 11, chapter, uh, chapter 11, verse 50, it's expedient for you that one die unless the nation perish. It's expedient, it's to your advantage that one die. Caiaphas said in John 18, 14, that it's expedient, it's to your advantage that one die for the people. Jesus turned around in John 16 and 7 and said, it's to your advantage that I go away. In other words, that I die. Because if I don't go away, the comforter will not come. The helper will not come. The partner will not come. The one that you need to get you through Life will not come and dwell in you. It's expedient. Now, we have no problem in this world, in the church world today, accepting the expediency, the advantage of what Jesus did in dying so that the people don't perish. We have no problem receiving that. We have no problem accepting the fact that Jesus Christ died because of that. If we believe on His death, accept His death, and come through the blood, we'll all be saved and heaven will be our home. We have no issues with that. The church does not dispute that. Matter of fact, there is no church that I know of, save maybe the Catholic church, that would dispute what Jesus did at Calvary as Him being the method, the way, and the only way that a man might know how to get to God and have access to heaven and into eternal life and live eternally in heaven with God. We have no dispute in the church world about that. We have no dispute that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Everybody receives that. Everybody accepts it. Everybody believes it. We all say, yes, I've been saved. But Jesus 
did not stop with the expediency of his death with respect to the people not perishing. Jesus used it again in, from 1150 to 167. Jesus turned around and used the same language and said it is to your advantage. Now watch what he said here. In 1150 he said it's to your advantage that I die so that the people don't perish. Then in John 16, 7 he said it's to your advantage that I go away for if I do not die or go away the thing you need for life will not come. The entity that you need for life, the divine person and agent of life will not come. The agent of life will not come. I can't send him as long as I'm here. Greater works cannot be done as long as I'm here. Greater works will never occur as long as... The only way greater works... The only way the greater one will ever live in you and be in you and be in you as the hope of glory is if I go away. Now we have no problem accepting him going away for our eternal life. Now watch me now. But we struggle in church world with him going away for our earthly life. Now think about what I'm saying. We struggle with him going away for our earthly life because everything that Jesus promised about the Holy Ghost dealt with what was to be done on earth. Think about that. We are more than pleased to accept the concept of God sending Jesus to die so that we can live eternally. But we struggle with the concept of God sending Jesus to die and then sending the paraclete, the comforter, the helper back into the earth to be your advantage while you live. Think about that. To be your advantage while you live. Why would God infill and infuse the Holy Spirit in front of everybody at the baptism of Jesus? And say this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And turn around and take him out of the earth and leave you with none of it. Why would God do that? Why would a father have food, warmth, and clothes in this house for his kids and when his children needed it, take it into the bedroom and lock the door. Why would a father do that? Why would an earthly father do that? Ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you today that at Jesus' own words, he did not do that. He said, your advantage in life, now watch it now, your advantage in life, your way to live at the advantage while you are here on earth is being sent to you because I go away. Your advantage, your ability to live a life that's more than an overcomer. Your advantage to know from heaven, to hear from heaven. Your advantage to be able to be spoken to directly from the throne room of God. is given to you, but I have to go away so that it can be sent to you. Mom has said to me a number of times, that two of the three were never out of the throne room at the same time. And I see that because when Jesus went away, he sent the third member down into the earth to be an advantage to the children of God while they live. Think about that. Your advantage is while they live. We accept the fact that Jesus died for us for eternal life. But we struggle with the fact that the paraclete, the helper, the comforter was called alongside of you to give you authority and life while you walk on earth. That's the key, ladies and gentlemen. The key to living and overcoming life. The key to knowing who God is. The key to access. Have you ever wondered... How in the world Jesus provided access to heaven? You can't touch it. You can't see it. You can read about it. 
But there's nothing out there. There's when you look up, it's a big blue sky or it's a big black sky. You can't, but access had to have been given because it was promised. The access was the entity, the individual, the person that came when Jesus left, that he sent back into the earth to be your living advantage. Now, I want to go deeper with that today. Man can live in a spiritual life. Man could live in a spiritual life. Man can live a life of revelation. Now, I want you to notice this. I'm talking about living. I'm not talking about dying. Everybody will stand up and shout, on, Oh, glory to God, heaven is the one. Let's all get when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be. Glory to God, let's just all go to heaven. None of us want to die to get there. Huh? Said that to a woman in school the other day, and every time she sees me, she laughs. She said, I never thought about that before, preacher. Never thought about that before. Everybody wants to go to heaven. None of us want to die to get there. But we'll sing songs. We'll jump up and down. I've seen them run the aisles and hairballs fall down. And all kinds of things happen when we start talking about heaven. What a day that will be. Oh, what a day that will be. You know what? Between now and then, I've got to live. So when I look at my points today, I'm talking about living. I'm not talking about time. My appointment with death is going to come. I don't know when it is. <coughs> I don't know how it's going to come. I don't know what state I'll be in. Whenever it's going to come though, because it's appointed every man wants to die. And in the judgment. What I'm worried about is living. What I'm worried about, not worried about, what I'm focused on is a term I want to use. I repent for using the word worry. What I'm focused on is living. Because in living is where I'm going to know how to live the nature and the character of God and how to conform to the image of Christ. When I get to heaven, I ain't got to worry about conforming to the image of Christ. I'll be in the image of Christ. Well, if I've got to concern myself with conforming to the image of Christ, it is not in the afterlife. It is in the... Today. It's living in the now. So when I look up, I realize man can live in a spiritual life. I can live a spiritual life right now. Man can live in the life of revelation. I can do that right now. How can I do that? How can I live a spiritual life? Because Christ is in me. The Holy Ghost dwells in me. The Spirit of God dwells in me. The Spirit of God lives in me. The Spirit of God leads me. He guides me. He directs me. He gives me the words to say. He brings all things to my remembrance. He reproves the world of sin. He reproves the world of righteousness. He reproves the world of judgment. He is the reprover and He lives in me. Oh yeah! So I can live a spiritual life. I can live a life of revelation for the very same reasons. I can be led by the Spirit. I can know where to go and what to say when I get there. Yesterday I preached a sermon in a funeral, a memorial service. Called all the opportunities of life are before the grave. And I said things in that service that I've never heard anybody say in a funeral service before. The Holy Ghost led me through it and ministered to the people there and bless the people there because when the Spirit of God is leading and the Spirit of God is speaking, there's a life in it. That's what I want. I want the life of revelation. I want to know what the Word of God says in application to me. I don't need Bible stories. I, I, I love David, but I'm not interested in David's Bible story. I want to know how David's life applies to my expression. Huh? I'm not interested in the life of Paul just to read it. I'm interested in how does Paul's life apply to me. I want to know how what Peter said applies to my life. Because you know what i got to do? I know there's some, well, something I'm going to do. I'm going to pay taxes. And I'm going to die. But in the middle, I want to know how to live. Huh? I want to know how to live. And the only way I can know how to live 
is to take advantage of the advantage that Jesus taught me to take. Not the advantage the world says, because the world would say, take advantage of Jesse. Get Jesse on your side and get Jesse to give you his money. And tell Jesse he'll be prosperous. Oh, if you just give to me, Jesse's blood, God will, God, just give it to me. Glory, I'll pray over Jesse, bless God. You and Sheldon, you all get married, you need to tithe it. It's so into my life. You, you need to give them to the pastor's life so that the pastor, so I can have and bless God, you'll be blessed behind it. Oh, yeah, just give it to me. Here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. What I want to know is, is what does God have for me in revelation that I can apply to my life so that I can learn to be who He was. There is an advantage that is given to me. Now I want to say this so you'll hear me. Giving is an advantage. Give because Jesus taught it. Giving is a good thing, and it shall be given back to you. But there are preachers that you know of very well that you turn on the TV and see all the time that are taking advantage of the people. And the people are giving great gladly to them and they're taking advantage of the people. What I want to know is, is how do I get the advantage of the Holy Spirit living in my life so that I can live a life that overcomes death, that overcomes the curse, that overcomes the issues, the struggles, the sufferings of life, the troubles and problems of life in the world that I live in so that I can bless others through the revelation of the knowledge of the Spirit of truth. Huh? Give the Lord a hand clap of prayer. Now watch this now. Man can live a rewarded life. I'm going to prove that to you. I don't know how many Sundays it will take me to get there. Man can live a rewarded life in the now. Man can live a rewarded life in the now. You can be rewarded by God in the now. Everybody, everybody preaches this and says, Well, bless God. When we get to heaven, there will be a crown for the soul winner. There will be a mansion on the other side of glory. It will have your name on it, bless God. When we all get to heaven. Hallelujah. You have it all. Well, I found out that the Bible says that I can be rewarded now because there's an advantage given in the Word that opens the windows of heaven to me that God, because of that advantage, poured out a blessing they could not contain. Do you realize, ladies and gentlemen, out of the 120 people that were baptized in the Spirit of God, they turned the world upside down in their precious spirit. And out of that 120, only two of them reverted back to the character of their past life and the Word of God did not say the Holy Spirit killed them, but the Bible said they fell dead. Their character. Now watch, watch. The Bible did not say the Holy Ghost killed them. He said you've lied to the Spirit of God and the Bible said they fell dead. Do you know what killed them? The character of carnality killed them. The character of me first killed them. The character of I don't need the advantage of the Holy Ghost killed them. Whoa! Now prove that to me, preacher. Well, I can. Romans chapter 8 and verse 6 said to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. When you live in the carnal, ladies and gentlemen, you are living as close to death as you could possibly live. When you're living without the advantage of the Spirit of God, you're living close to death. You're near death. Your mind is not renewed and therefore it is wrapped up in the things of the senses which are wrapped up in the things of the curse. Your carnal life without the advantage of the Holy Spirit. Your carnal life without the advantage of the Holy Spirit is living near to death. 
I was studying this this week and the Spirit of God showed me something. And this is what He showed me. He said, the carnal man lives very close to the attack of the enemy. The carnal man lives very close where the enemy reaches out and attacks him on a regular basis. The carnal man, the man whose mind is stuck on practical, sensual, sexual things that lead them off into the flesh and into the desire, live a life very close to death. Ladies and gentlemen, what I want to live is a life that is led very close to the cross, to the man Jesus Christ. But the Bible is very clear. Acts chapter 1 and verse 2, you can quote it to me. It said, after that he had gone away, he through the Holy Spirit gave commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. After that he had gone away, he sent back a comforter. And through that comforter he testified of him. What did he testify of? That's a question, ain't it? What is it about? Hey, hey that ain't good, good language, but bless God, it'll work. What did he testify about? What is he telling you? What is your advantage? What is the advantage of a spiritual life? What is the advantage of revelation? What is the advantage of a belief system that gets the rewards of what is the advantage? What's he telling you? Well, let me tell you what he's telling you, ladies and gentlemen. He's telling you that I'm redeemed by love divine. Glory, glory. Christ is mine. What is Jesus saying through the Holy Ghost to the church? What is, what is being missed in the carnal church that doesn't take advantage of the Holy Spirit? What is being missed? Well, let me tell you what is being missed. He was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of your peace was upon him, and by his stripes your feet, your healed. I would that everyone would prosper and be in health even as their soul prospered. I wish that you would get out of the carnal mind and walk in the Spirit of God through the plan of redemption that guarantees you eternal life that starts today. A life of living for God that starts today. A life of love that is full with the presence of power and provision. That's what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying, I've provided for you. I've been your Jehovah Jireh. I've been the God that meets your needs. I am the God that will heal you. I am the God that will deliver you. I am the God that will set you free from bondage. I am the God that gives you peace. I am the God that gives you joy. I am the God that lives on the inside of you, that dwells in you, that uplifts you and gives you courage. I am the God that gives you words. I am the God. I am the God. I am the God. God that made redemption through the cross of Calvary. I am the God that sent Jesus to die so that you wouldn't have to perish and give you an advantage. And that advantage would be your advantage for living. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Oh, yes, it's so. Jesus is not communicating about how for you to get rich. He's not communicating about how for you to buy a new home. He's not communicating for you about how to buy a new plane. He's not communicating about buying a new car. He's communicating about the things he died for, ladies and gentlemen. He's telling you on the inside of you, your spirit man is full of health. Your spirit man is full of the wealth of heaven. Your spirit man has every need supplied. Your spirit man has me working on the inside of you. And as long as I'm there, there will always be a hope of glory. Yes, so That's what he's telling you. That's what he's telling you. And you know why I know that? Because that's what Jesus told him when he lived. He said, it's expedient for you. It's to your advantage that I go away. It's to your advantage that I go to the Father. It's best for you. Because the only way you can live is to live in the Spirit. The only way you can live and overcome is to live in the Spirit. Because every carnal man, Paul said in Romans chapter, or in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 
Paul said, I could not speak unto you as spiritual. Now watch me now. He said, I can't speak to you as spiritual. I have to speak to you as babies in Christ. What in the world do you mean? What's he saying? He's saying you're saved. You believed. But then he turned around and said there is envies and strife. And you know what we did? We said, well, then people are arguing among themselves. Bless God. They're arguing among themselves. That's the problem. Oh, the, those Corinthians, they couldn't get along with anybody. Glory to God. There's envies and strife. They, 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 they fussing with each other. And he said, some of you say you're of this, and some of you say you're of that, and, and, and you're Paul, and you're Apollos, and, and, and you got envies and strife going on. You know what I'm saying it is? I'm saying it's simple doubt and unbelief. In the end, the man that is a babe in Christ, there's envies and strife going on inside of him. Because on the inside of him, there's doubt and there's unbelief in every carnal man you ever walk with. Everyone you know. Every carnal preacher you ever hear. If you're going to hear the story of doubt and unbelief come out of his mouth. The story of doubt and unbelief that will, that will congeal and stop the advantage that God has provided for you. The carnal man will have strife. He'll have strife with God. One moment. Now how do I know that? Because James said out of the same spout comes cursings and blessings. Tell me that ain't envy and strife. Huh? Coming out of the same mouth will be something that's good and something that's bad. Yeah, that's envy and strife, ladies and gentlemen. That's babes in Christ. Paul said, I can't talk to you as spiritual. What was it that would have made them spiritual? What was it that they could have had? Well, all you got to do is look first read in chapter 2. First Corinthians chapter 2, Paul begins to unveil the great story of, uh, of the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the revelation. He said, I have not seen nor ear hath heard the things that God hath prepared for those that love Him. But it has been revealed, hallelujah, by the Spirit of God. And he said, the world can't understand. They can't receive it because they're stuck in doubt and unbelief. They're stuck in envy and spite. They're stuck in their carnal self but blessed cup. The world can't receive it. But the spiritual man, the spiritual man, he can take it. He can get it on the inside of him and it'll be an advantage to it. Everywhere he goes, everything he does will be blessed. Wherever the soles of his feet touch, they'll be blessed because that spiritual man can compare spirit with spirit. He can live in it, he can walk in it, he can think in it, he can take advantage of it because Jesus provided it for him. Oh, yes, it's so. I want to ask you today, I'm about to close. I want to ask you today. Let me look here just a second because I do want to say this. The man who does not live by the advantage of the comforter, I want you to hear that today, is a man that lives near death. He lives near the attack of the enemy. He lives near the curse. That's why recently I've started every service by saying I've received nothing of the curse. Because I don't live in the carnal man. My mind has been renewed by the Spirit of Almighty God. My mind has been changed, transformed, translated out of darkness into the kingdom of His dear Son. But if you live in the carnal man, what would the carnal mind be? Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, it was Indians and strife. It was putting yourself following something other than following God. It puts you in a position of doubt and unbelief. What is doubt and unbelief? What is doubt and unbelief? Well, let me teach it to you real quick. Doubt and unbelief is when your tongue produces something out of it that is contrary to the revealed word and will of God. That's what the Jews did. Out of their tongue they said, this is Joseph. Who is this? This is the carpenter. They revealed something out of their mouth that was contrary to the revealed truth of the Word of God. But wait a minute now, wait a minute now, watch me now, watch me now. Watch. What was the Spirit of God supposed to do? He said He would be the Spirit <coughs> of what? Truth. He would reveal out of your mouth 
the applied truth of the Word of God. And He would lead you into that truth and guide you into that truth to such an extent that you would be brought, now watch it now, to remembrance of the truth when you needed it. Now how many times in your life have you spoken something out of your mouth? Now watch it now. Watch it now. You've got to take evaluation of yourself here. You've got to take a look because the advantage is in you. But sometimes you speak out of your mouth something and the Holy Spirit quickens you and says, shouldn't have said that. Huh? Ever happened to you? Yes, it has happened to every one of us in here. The Holy Spirit says you shouldn't have said that. That is that's not right. That's contrary. That's why you hear me whenever I say something that is contrary to the Word of God. I search in the tournament and say, let me teach you. I repent. I repent of what I just said. I ain't taking that. I'm not living that. I'm not going to do that. Because that's contrary to the Word of God. In, in that very moment where you have spoken out of your mouth and not repented of it, watch it now. Carnality is near to death. The Bible said that you eat the fruit of your lips. You are fed by what you say. The Bible said the candle of the Lord is the spirit of man. If you want the candle of the Lord, the advantage of God, to live in you and to be a bright light, then the words that come out of your mouth have got to agree with the word of the spirit of truth. Doubt and unbelief will put a cap over the candle of the Lord and bring a man from a spiritual man full of life and peace to a man full of carnality. To a man that is a babe in Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, you have no reason to be a babe in Christ. You have no reason not to live at the advantage. Now let me say this to you. This is a full gospel Pentecostal church. You have no reason. Your church, your car is in the parking lot. Anybody that drives by says that's Pentecostal holding this church. There's people in there full gospel. Then people in there believe the Word. Then people in there believe in the Spirit of God. Then people in there live at the advantage of the Spirit of God. Why not just live it then? You come to church here, you hear the preaching of the Word of God, you live under the anointing, the Holy Ghost talks to you every Sunday in prophecy of the Spirit of truth. Why not just live it then? Why not just set yourself like a flint to live what the Word of God teaches and let the word of the Spirit of truth be an advantage to you of life and peace. Why not? Oh, that's good question now. I'm going to tell you what. The Holy Ghost will tell you. He'll tell you. All you've got to do is listen. Doubt and unbelief. Doubt and unbelief will always spew out of the mouth of the carnal man. Doubt and unbelief. Doctrine will always spew out of the mouth of the, of the, of the carnal man. Doctrine that is contrary to the complete gospel. Doctrine that is often contrary even to the words that Jesus taught. What I want to come out of me, now watch it now, is I want to come out of me the conforming of me to Jesus. Jesus said one man would die. And he did. Jesus said, if I die, I'll live again. I'll raise this up in three days. And he did. But Jesus did not stop there, ladies and gentlemen. He said, it's to your advantage that I go away. Because if I go away, I'm going to send you a partner. I'm going to send you a helper. I'm going to send you a comforter. I'm going to send you a spirit that will be a truth to you. And that truth will testify only of me. He won't testify of himself. He'll testify only of the things I say to him. And then immediately in Acts chapter 2, 1 and verse 2, the word of God begins to say that after that he had gone away, he threw the spirit. He threw the spirit, began to give commands. Ladies and gentlemen, you and I should be commanded by the Spirit of God. You and I should be moved by the Spirit of God. You and I should be led by the Spirit of God. You and I should be putting down things of the carnal world because the Spirit of God is conforming us and convincing us and transferring and translating us and transforming us into the image.
image of His dear Son, we should be living that way every day. And then we would find out about an advantage. An advantage of knowledge. Listen to the advantage Jesus had. Now watch me now because I'm about to get done. The Word of God said that the Spirit of the Lord rested upon Him. What an advantage. Does the Spirit of God rest upon you? Then it said the Spirit of wisdom. What an advantage. What an advantage to be smarter than your rivals. What an advantage to have insight, concepts, and ideas that no one else has. What an advantage to have the wisdom of God working in you. Jesus did. <laughs> Jesus said, it's to your advantage that I go away. Because if I go away, I'm going to send that wisdom back to you. Now watch it now. He didn't say that he was going to just send the wisdom into the world. He said it's expedient for you that I go away. For if I go away, I will send the comforter. And he will abide with you. Someone said, well, that's God that was only for those that were in the upper room. Glory to God. And I say lies. There are three kinds of lies. You know there's a lie. There's a big fat lie. And there's a bald face lie. You can put it anywhere you want. Because there were many that the Word of God declares were baptized in the Holy Spirit. That were not in the upper room. Someone said, well, bless God, the church doesn't need that anymore. How could you not need the advantage of peace and life? How could you not? I want the advantage of heaven. But I want to live in the now, in the advantage Jesus promised me. He promised me that advantage. And then... Peter very eloquently said, what you see now is what he sent. I want to live in the Spirit. It is to your advantage, Jesse, to live in the Spirit. It's to your advantage, Ted, to live in the Spirit. Because the Spirit of God will give you wisdom, knowledge, understanding, counsel, might, and fear of the Lord. That's what Jesus had. Now hold on because I'm going to finish you. When Paul said that we would be conformed to his image, don't you know that the image he was referring to was the image of the Spirit of God? When Paul said that, what he was referring to was the fact that the Spirit of God rested upon him. That the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, counsel, might, and the fear of the Lord from Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 2, that's what rested upon him. That's what made him different than anybody else. Because he took on the form and fashion of a man, but something, something, something gave him an advantage that they didn't have. And that same something Jesus said, it's in your best interest. Now listen to me now, because I'm closing. It's in such a good interest to you that it will change your personality. Someone said, well now I don't get there. Look what it did for Paul. Paul was going down the road spewing and spouting threats and death to every Christian he could find and he ran into the man named Jesus and his personality changed. He went from a carnal man to a man full of the Spirit. Changed him. Changed him. Sometimes I wonder if we want that change. It changed Paul, now listen to it now, from an angry man, from a mean man, from a power mongering man, from a murderer. To a man that said, I die daily. I am crucified with Christ. 
I'm living in the Spirit of God and His demonstration and power comes out of me. Everywhere I go, the signs and wonders of the Spirit of God follow me. Oh yeah, it'll change you. But we don't always want that advantage in our life. We want to sometimes be like the rest of the world. We want to commiserate Tell the world how tough it is, how hard it is. When Jesus said to you, I've given you a partner. He's been called alongside to help you. He's been called alongside to build you. He's been called alongside to encourage you. He's been called alongside to lift you up. He's, now watch it, been called alongside to give you life. But bigger. Peace in life. That would get close to Peace in life. The advantage that Jesus said was expedient. Peace in life. Because anything else puts you near death. Anything else puts you in a carnal life. Anything short of it puts you in a carnal life. Now today, ladies and gentlemen, here is the beauty of this. The Holy Spirit has been sent. The Spirit of God has been given. The life of the Spirit of truth is in the earth. And that life can encompass you. And that life can lead you. And that life can give you a life full of the privilege and power of a high priest in the kingdom of God, translated into something that you were not, just like it did for Paul. It's your advantage. It's your ability to overcome. It's your ability to control yourself. It's your ability to live in the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of goodness, kindness, meekness, temperance, self-control. Against such there is no law. It's your ability to be different. It's your advantage. An advantage, an advantage. If I said to you today, I'm going to give you a job and it's going to pay you more money and it's going to be to your advantage to take it, everyone in the room would jump up and down and say, give it to me, bless God. I want that. I, I need that. My, 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 my personal life, my, my family life, my whole life be changed by that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm giving you better than that. I'm giving you the opportunity to let the Spirit of God come in and the power that Jesus gave you in the plan of redemption to come in and Him testify to you what it is that is in you that He can take and make into something absolutely dynamic for Him and every material thing that surrounds you will fall into place just as it did for the church in the book of Acts it will fall into place because the Holy Spirit, your advantage, will make it so. Temple, carnal, or spiritual. The world understands the temple, but they do not understand the spiritual. Now, Father, I preach the gospel to these people today. Father, your word has given them an advantage. Whether they know it, whether they understand it, whether, whatever the circumstance may be, God, but as they've heard the word of God, the spirit of God has pricked their lives. The spirit of truth has risen on the inside of them. They know on the inside of them that there is an advantage in them today. And they have the choice. And that choice is to receive that advantage and to live in that advantage and to seek that advantage and to listen to that advantage and to follow the teaching of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Or to keep going like they're going. 
Now listen. Father, resonate that to them in Jesus' name. Resonate that thought to them, God. They, they can keep going like they're going. From hardship and trial. Or they can walk in the advantage that you provided for them. The advantage of the knowledge of the truth. Now the Holy Spirit has just said something to you that I want you to hear. I want you to hear it again. The Holy Spirit just said something to you. It didn't come out of me. It came out of the Spirit of God. You keep going like you're going. Keep on in hardship. You can keep on like Paul. When Jesus said, Paul, it's hard against the pricks. <coughs> Hard to live a life. Hard to live a life without the Spirit of God, the advantage of God. You can live that hard life. You can keep going that hard way. You can keep thinking that hard way. You can keep trusting that everything will get better and that if I just go to church, it'll get better. If, if I just... Give a little more in the offering. It'll get better. Bless God. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here's the truth. Or you can live in the advantage of the Spirit of God. Because the advantage of the Spirit of God will put everything in your material world in order. That's exactly what He did in the book of Acts. He put everything in the material world in order. He showed and proved that He knew exactly what to do and when to do it. And every time they prayed, the advantage of God sent them a word and said, do this, sign Him, go here, preach the gospel there, baptize them in the Spirit over here, go to the Gentiles and tell the Gentile world about the love of God and the great advantage of my Spirit. And you can keep going like you're going. Or you can say on the inside of me today, it has resonated me. I see it. I see it, preacher. My spirit is moved, preacher. My, my, my soul is touched. My spirit is touched. I am moved by the words of the, the gospel of Jesus. And today I receive what it is you're preaching. I take this advantage. I receive this advantage. Some of you may wind up being baptized in the Holy Spirit today. It may be a week, it may be a month, but as you begin to seek this advantage, the Word of God will come to you and lead you in the way that the Spirit of God would have you go, and you will be changed. Did not happen for Paul at the moment he fell on the road to Damascus, but it did come. So as you meditate for just a minute, as you say to yourself, what is it for me that I want? To go like I'm going or to take the advantage of the Holy Spirit? What is it for me that I want? And if you want the Spirit of God to become your advantage and you're willing to step out of what you were, and how you work. Then I want you to stand on your feet and raise your hands and thank God for it. I want you to stand on your feet and begin to raise your hands and thank God for the great advantage I receive it, God. I receive it today, God. I receive the Spirit of God today. I, I take unto myself the advantage. That advantage was given to me by you, Father, and I receive it. Raise your hands and thank you for it. Say, Father, I receive the advantage today that Jesus, I receive this advantage of the Spirit. Father, Jesus saved me. I, I took that advantage for eternal life, but today I receive the advantage for life and peace in my life, in my home, in my work, on my job. I receive the advantage that you said yourself was such an advantage that you had to go away and die so that you could send it back to me. I receive it, God. I receive that very thing, God. It's mine. I receive it by the power of Almighty God. It belongs to me in Jesus' name. I receive it now. Worship the Lord. 
Trust in God. Worship the Lord. Receive from God today. Let the Spirit of God cleanse you and wash you and set you free and set your feet on the path to know the advantage of the infilling and leading of the Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you today. I thank you today, God. I thank you today, God. I worship you today, God. I honor you today, God. Some of you need to open your mouth and begin to pray in your sang in your spirit language. Some of you need to open your mouth and just say, I receive it, God. I honor you, Father. I honor you, Father. Change me. 